Hey guys, Pete here for the final instalment of the build time lapse. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. You can see me take the X axis motor off again. This is because I brought the same motors that were used on the Route 3 CNC machine. However, because this design is a ball screw one, the RPM of the motors needs to be much higher than that of Route 3 to get the same sort of travel speeds out of it. Unfortunately, the low current motors that were used on Route 3 were no longer suitable for this Route 4, so I had to buy a completely different set. I'd recommend checking the bill of materials out in the description below to make sure you purchase the correct ones. You can see me take the Z-axis motor mount off again, for the fourth time maybe? Now, the files you download, you'll download the right one, but I had a particularly difficult time making sure I got this right. I couldn't accommodate all the belt sizes I wanted to, I either got it too short or too long but in the files you download, it should be spot on. Now it's time to look at the drag chains used for the cabling. There is two sets, one for the x-axis and one for the y-axis. The x-axis has a steel box section that straddles between the two side panels. The 3D printed mount that supports this has enough mounting holes to accommodate any bit of material. I just so happen to have a leftover bit of steel used from the frame. Just be careful though, there is not a lot of room between the y-axis box sections and the bottom of this rail. I had to take the angle grinder to mine to give myself enough clearance for the y-axis to move freely. Just be mindful when you're assembling your machine that this can happen. I wanted a clean aesthetic for the cabling, so whilst mounting the drag chains I decided to drill holes within the baseboard to root cables through. I won't talk about the wiring too much in this build time lapse as I try and produce some detailed wiring diagrams that should accommodate any of the root CNC machines. When I built my root 3 CNC machine I did come across some issues of noise. This noise caused the Arduino Mega that was controlling the CNC machine to reset periodically. The cause of this was due to the noise coming from the VFD spindle. To overcome this I've used some screened 3 core 1.5mm cabling to drive the spindle motor. Since screening the cables I've no longer had any issues with the Arduino Mega resetting. Wiring the motor is very simple, I used a 4 core screened cable that was the same gauge as the stepper motors that I was wiring to. I was simply extending the pre-installed wires so that they would reach the stepper motor controllers that was housed within the electronics enclosure. Please check the Root CNC website out for more details. The photos of the electronics enclosures and the wires do show a lot of detail and you can glean a lot from them. For the end stops I used two types of wires, the first being bell wire. I used bell wire on the end stops that didn't go through the drag chains. Because bell wire is a single core conductor, as the drag chain moves it work hardens the copper and causes it to snap and fatigue. In this instance I used a multi-core cable. For the Z-axis and X-axis, I used a multi-stranded cable, which was four cores. I could split the four cores up into min and max for each end stop. The multi-core cable was the same multi-core cable I used on the Route 3 build. This was just left over and I had it to hand. You can see me install them now on the Z-axis carriage. They were installed on the inside of the mount. You can't quite see this from the time lapse though. Installing the x-axis ball screw into the z-axis carriage can be quite tricky. I left this a little bit too late to fix this to the carriage as the drag chain mounts got in the way and stopped me installing the screws. It became a bit fiddly but can be done once the drag chain is installed. I would recommend doing this in the early stage of the build. You can see in the bottom left hand side of the machine an Arduino Mega and a ramp shield. I've been using this combination on all my Root CNC machines, however for this build I want to be a bit more advanced and have finer control over the feed rates. So for now this is only temporary until I find a better solution. Although this setup I'm very familiar with and I'd like to keep it just whilst I get this machine commissioned. Now you can see me install some optional dust shields for the Y axis. It is highly recommended that you do produce some dust shields for the ball screws as any swarf or dust going into the ball screws could reduce the life of them. You'll see in here the first movements of the Route 4 CNC machine. I spent a lot of time making sure that the commands I was putting in resulted in the correct movements of the machine. For an added bit of bling you can install some LED strip lighting on the axis. There is enough clearance between the bearing blocks to install a standard width LED strip. Just to be sure to get the silicone shielded types 
just to stop any swarf or debris killing the LED strips. To control the LED strips I used a MOSFET pin on the Arduino ramps board to be able to turn these on and off. This enables me to control the brightness and when they turn on and off. It gives me a visual indication when the machine is running or not. You can see me now change the Z-axis motor mount again for the last time thankfully. As I mentioned in the previous time lapse video, you can use software to auto square the machine. This is what I'm doing here. I'm using a pencil in the end of the spin and some green tape and marking on specific areas of the bed to work out if the machine is square or not. From that I can produce a coefficient to work out what the second Y axis should do. Once the machine has homed itself, the coefficient is applied to the second Y axis motor. Providing you got the coefficient correct, you'll have a repeatable way of auto squaring the machine. Thankfully, during the build phase of the machine, I spent a lot of time ensuring that the rails were square and perpendicular to one another. So when I came to measure if the machine was square or not, it actually yielded a true and square result. This was unexpected as I did expect to apply a coefficient to the second Y axis. However, it's nice to know I've got the option to auto square in the future. What I'm doing now is getting the machine to drill mounting points for workpiece holding. The workpiece holding uses some M6 insert nuts. I did get the wiring backwards the first time and it was drilling holes in reverse. It didn't stop it though, it just made a lot of smoke. Swapping two wires around resolved this issue and I was back off to the races. That's all for this build series. If you like it, please leave a comment below letting me know what you thought of it. This is the first time me doing these kinds of videos, so please let me know where I can improve on. I want to do more of them to help share knowledge within the community. So please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more episodes. Thank you, bye.